Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, everybody, here we are once again, another edition of Friday Night Flies. My name is Zach. We're here at Bass Pro in Tawasson. Um, I think I'm the only one doing shows this week, so you're getting two. Um, yeah, I've been kind of inspired by Scotty Holmes as of late. He's done some pretty cool patterns. Um, the first one I'm going to do a spin on is his Doc Spratly that he did two weeks ago. Um, as he was tying it, I was thinking in my head, this would look awesome in a composite loop. So I tried it, and it looks pretty sweet. So um, I'm going to kind of go over that for you. And the other one, I got a nice little squid pattern for you, which will work great off the beaches, um, in the rivers as well, for the pinks and the coho and any kind of species, really. Um, I posted it on a group in, uh, on Facebook that I'm in, and a customer was stoked about trying it down in Mexico. So it's uh, one of those patterns. It should be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so let's head on down and check out this Doc Spratly composite loop variant that I've done, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so here it is, the uh, composite loop Doc Spratly. So like I said, I was watching that video from Scotty Holmes a couple weeks ago and got pretty stoked, and as he was tying it, I'm like, that needs to go in a composite loop. And it actually turned out pretty cool. So this is going to breathe really, really well in the water um, and pulse quite a bit, which is kind of cool. So it's definitely, uh, I want to say it's maybe a little more durable than Scott's pattern, um, just because it is in a composite loop, nothing's loose. Um, it's all in there nice and tight. And it's also got a little tinge of UV to it. So hopefully that's picking up there. Anyways, let's get rolling here. So one thing, if you're going to tie these up, what I would recommend is um, I would check out our the video I did a while back on our website, FridayNightFlies.com, called the Composite Loop Sculpin. Basically what I did is I broke down how composite loops work and how to build them. Um, so this pattern, just for the sake of time, I've already built the loop portion, um, and I'll just be throwing it in. But I'll tell you what I put in there and everything. I think it just bumped my vice there. So let me just make sure that's still in focus. Yeah, looks good. Cool. So I'm going to pop the hook out of the vise. Oh, and I bumped it again. Jeez. So this is a size 4 Daiichi 1720. Um, this is about as big as I would go with this pattern. You can definitely go a lot smaller. Um, the first couple I did, I found my composite loops, because I'm used to doing them on salmon and steelhead flies, is that it was... Uh, quite bulky so I definitely needed to sparse things up quite a bit so start off I just got some 70 Danville in black UTC 70 uh, uni 80 will all work as well I'll just kind of dress the hook here take that back so I got some pretty cool techniques in this one I'm sure you guys will enjoy and I'm just gonna take my thread back to about between the hook point and the barb there for the tail, just like Scotty Holmes, just got some black pheasant tail here. I'm going to take about a good chunk of fibers there, maybe 12 or so, however that many that was. And I want this to be about the length of the body. You can go a little shorter too if you like. I'm just going to lock that down right on top. I'm going to take a wrap underneath. This is going to help to kind of splay those tail fibers out a little bit. And I'll just back wrap on this a little bit. Take these butt ends here, trim them off square. It's okay that it extends only about half the way. I got a cool trick on how to bulk up a body without ripping through all your thread. So this pattern does have a rib. Um, I didn't want to use wire because I just got these super glitter threads from Superfly. These are pretty cool materials. These are going to be wicked for ribbing on chronomids and things like that. So what I've done, I've taken equal lengths of the red and the claret. They're both pretty cool colors. And I'm going to tie them in together. So I just got two chunks there that I've already done. I'm going to tie them in on my side of the shank. Just kind of pull that in a little bit. There we go. Take those right to the base of the tail. I'm just going to stick those in my material clip for now. And now I'm going to tie in the body material. So the body material is just some peacock curl. This one happens to be dyed orange. Um, I've had this sitting around for a while, so I figured I might as well use it. So I've got some dyed bright greens as well. I'm just going to take about four strands, keep the butt ends aligned, 
I'm going to cut about an inch or so off the top because the tips can be quite brittle. I'm going to show you a way to strengthen these as well. So those I'm just going to tie in on my side. Just going to wrap up a bit until we're about two thirds of the way up the shank and then I'm going to take my thread back down. I'm just going to leave it here at the back. Now, like I said, I'm going to build up the body without ripping through all my thread. So here I've got some Uni Stretch. Um, this is a pretty cool product. This one's in black. I've kind of picked up this technique from John Kent. He uh, invented the pumpkin head, of course, and he does a lot of chronomid patterns that are really famous here in BC. And he uses this stuff to build up the taper on his chronomid bodies. So I'm going to start it about a third, back, a third of the way back from the eye. I'm just going to start it like I would a normal thread. I'm going to take that tag and just make it go all the way back. Trim that butt section off. And this I've just got on a separate spool here. Yeah, that's the one there. And now I'm going to take touching wraps all the way up to about that one third mark. And just to build up a taper, I'm going to go back down about three quarters of the way down the shank and then back up. And then I'm going to go about halfway down and then back up. I'm going to go just a smidge down again. So as you can see there, i got a bit of a taper going on. And now I'm just going to whip finish. Like so. Trim that away. That's a cool way to build up bodies on your chronomids and things like that. Now I'm going to pull my thread back. So it's about the same length as these peacock curls. And I'm just going to twist them. Take them in my fingers and twist, twist, twist around that thread. This is going to cord up that peacock curl and keep it nice and tight and uh, kind of strengthen it a little bit. So you get kind of a peacock rope like that. So now using the rotary feature on my mongoose, just going to wind it around. I'm going to take it up to about the end of that taper before I finish that uni stretch. You can throw down a layer of super glue as well if you like. I forgot my uh, Superfly head cement at home. Basically, I'm going to take them right there. I'm going to grab the ends. I'm going to trap them in. Two wraps, do a couple wraps on the other side, trim away those butts. And now, I'm going to wrap my thread forward. And I'm going to swap my thread for some UTC 140 in olive. You can use whatever thread you want. I, but for the composite loops, I like a thicker thread. The uh, 70 deniers, the 80s just don't quite cut it. So something a little bit thicker. So 210 Danville works as well. So just trim that away, get rid of my black, and now I got the olive. Plus, I want the olive for a uh, just to have a nice green head. So I'm just going to create a dubbing loop. Just going to place my finger on top. It doesn't have to be too long. I'm going to double it over, wrap around the shank. Wrap my bobbin around that thread twice, that keeps it closed. And wrap back on it a few times. Now I'm just going to take my thread forward. I got a small little loop here, it's not too, too big. And like I said, I've already built my composite loop. So what I've put in here, like I said, check out my composite loop sculpting video, I'll show you how I build them. I've done a base layer of diamond dub and holographic chartreuse. This is about two thirds of what I've um, used in there for the dubbing. And I've used some uh, black diamond dub as well. And basically I blended them together. If you're gonna do a bunch, I would kind of go two thirds to one third of the black and uh, throw it in a coffee grinder and blend it up a couple times. And that's gonna give you a nice even disperse of, uh, of fibers. So that's my base layer. Then I've taken some of the uh, pheasant tail again in black. And this I've kept fairly short. I've got it so it extends about maybe halfway up the tail. And I've placed those fibers so that they land right just a little over the middle line of this uh, dubbing pack that I've got here. And then I've added some Senyo's Freckled Predator Wrap, and UV Freckled Silver. This is a pretty cool one. If you don't have any of the Predator Wrap, this is definitely one that's going to do you for a lot of patterns. And I only use a little bit. And uh, basically I've cut it off the string that it comes on and I've cut it into, folded it over once, trimmed it, folded it over again, trimmed it again. And I've placed those very short fibers about 
in my loop here. So those are 50-50. The, uh, the pheasant tail is probably about 95 to 5%. And then when I place it in the loop here, I don't know if you can see that. Let's kind of hold it up here. Where's my needle? So if that's the middle line, I've got the pheasant tail just sticking out just a little bit and the predator wraps coming about 50-50 on either side. And now that it's in there, I'm going to insert my dubbing spinner. Again, I forgot mine at home. Jeez. You're prepping for two patterns, sometimes you forget stuff. Luckily I got a bunch here in store. And I'm just going to throw that in there. And now that it's in the loop, I'm just going to poke at the pheasant tail here, just to kind of spread it out a little bit. So this loop isn't very big, it's maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches, it's not very big at all. So there we go. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pinch it shut, I'm going to spin my spinner, I'm going to let go and you'll see everything kind of spins around there. You give it another, another good spin. I'm going to take my needle, I'm just going to run it down the middle, and just kind of pick all this out. And as you can see, that kind of gets rid of any of the loose fibers. I forgot my toothbrush, so I got a little dubbing pick here. I made my own, I bought some popsicles and uh, threw some Velcro on there. Awesome little tool to have if you don't have one already. I'm going to be using it in my next video as well. So this just basically gets rid of any of the loose fibers that don't want to be there. Now that that's all kind of sticking out how I want it, another quick little spin. I'm going to pull it straight up. And if you watched my composite sculpin video, moisture is key to getting these loops to behave. So I've just got a little cup of water here. I'm just wetting my fingers. I'm really squishing all this stuff down here. Just to kind of create a hackle. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a couple wraps here, get it positioned. And I'm just gonna do touching turns all the way forward and palmering it back as I go. It looks a little unruly, looks a little crazy right now. But once this dries and it puffs back up, you saw it at the beginning there, it's a pretty cool looking fly. Just one turn in front of the next, nice and tight. I think I gave myself enough room there. So my main body there was only about two thirds of the hook shank. And then I left myself about a third to put this loop in. There's the dubbing there. I'll get one turn at the front there. So I'm gonna lock this loop in. So I'm gonna take a wrap behind with my thread. And I'm just gonna pull everything back here. Get a couple wraps in front. Just to lock everything in place. Trim away that excess there. Again, I'm just going to pull everything back, build myself up a nice green head here. Doesn't need to be too big. This helps to just wrap back on all the fibers too, so that's going to get them all flowing in the direction that I want. Just do a nice little whip finish here. Just a couple turns. And now, I'm going to take my Oh, you know what? I forgot to put in my rib. <laughs> so, after the peacock curl, I would have round my rib up. I'm just going to trim that away. I knew I was forgetting something. So, with the two strands of super glitter thread, I just twist them in my fingers. And it gives kind of a unique color to it, which is kind of neat. So, this one's going to be a little hairy. That one comes off. Not the end of the world. Oh, the joys of tying live. Sometimes you forget stuff. So, yeah, just twist them around. Get about six or seven wraps. And now that I've got my loop in, I'm just going to pick it out here. And basically what this does is it helps to free all those fibers that were in there that got trapped. Now I'm going to take my dubbing pick. I would have taken my toothbrush if I had it. I'm going to brush everything forward. Again, this helps to get rid of any fibers that didn't want to be there. Just kind of pull them out. And then we're just going to brush that all back. As you can see, the majority of the bulk is at the head there. And you get this nice, beautiful shape. 
kind of show you the front profile there. That's what the front profile looks there. It's pretty deadly. And I'll just add some uh, solar res super thin on the front. Clear that up. I don't know if you can see that there, but on the body, if I can pull this forward, hopefully it picks it up. You get a little shimmer of that rib that's in there, which I forgot to do. So this is a super durable Doc Spratly. Like I said, this is all gonna pulse in the water and uh, it's a pretty deadly little pattern. So yeah, let's uh, head on up and sign out. All right guys, so there it is, my uh, composite loop Spratly. Thank you Scotty Holmes for uh, showing me your variation and uh, kicking this old school pattern into the 21st century. I think it's pretty cool with all these new materials that we got, the, uh, the twists and turns that we can put on these uh, classic patterns. So like I said, little UV tinge to it, which is kind of cool. Hopefully that's picking up there. Um, it's a deadly little pattern. I'm pretty excited to go out and fish it. So uh, I know Scott's been having some success on it. Uh, again, just the only thing with the composite loops, really making them nice and sparse. Um, with my salmon patterns, I tend to put a little more material in them, but they're a lot bigger loops. So that was the one thing that I kind of struggled with the first couple attempts I had was just they were too bulky. So definitely putting as little material as possible in those loops as you can is definitely the key. So yeah, tie some up and uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I got another pattern coming up, so stay tuned and we'll uh, get that coming up next a little bit.